for the things that he has done. And as I always say, if he never does anything else, he's already done more than enough. I am just blessed uh, to be here uh, today to share again uh, with this uh, Second Baptist Church family. Uh, I was here for my cousin's uh, service on yesterday and appreciate all of the support that you have given to my aunt and uncle. Um, that I always tell people, you never need a friend until you need a friend. And uh, this is the time when they need a friend. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity again to worship you today in spirit and in truth. For you alone, God, are worthy to be praised. And so we realize that this is the day that you have made. And God, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, in spite of what we may be feeling, in spite of what we may be going through, we still say you are worthy to be praised. As a matter of fact, God, we're going to be like David. We're going to bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. And God, I pray right now for these, your people who are in this place. I pray that you give us a word today, a word that will challenge us, a word that will heal us of our hurts, a word that will encourage us, inspire us, motivate us to be better people. God, I ask right now that you would hide me behind the cross. So much so, God, that they might not see nor hear me, but they may see and hear you. And I pray that your word will fall on good soil. God, I ask that you block out any distractions that will hinder your word from going forth today. Spirit of living God, fall fresh. We need to hear from you today. We don't want to hear from Nighton, but we want to hear from heaven. So have your way in this place. Do what you want to do, God, as long as you want to do it. And we'll be ever mindful to give your name the praise and the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I, I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain Sometimes the clouds hang low I can hardly see the road I've asked the question, Lord Why so much pain? For he knows what's best for me Although my weary eyes, they can't see. So I'll say thank you, Lord. Any grateful folk in the house, I, I won't complain. Can I tell you why I won't complain? God, be good to me. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. to me more than this whole world or you could ever be he's been so good to me 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 he dried every one of my tears away turn my midnight into day so I'll just say thank you Lord I, I won't complain Can I say it one more time? God, God been good to me He's been so good to me Better than you, better than you Or you or you or you could ever be He's been so good He's been so good He's been so good So good so good to me, me, me. Hey, 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 hey. He dried every one of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So instead of complaining, 
Brother Chip, I learned how to lift my hands and say, hey, thank you, Lord. I've been lied on, but thank you, Lord. Pastor Reed, I've been misunderstood, but thank you, Lord. Sometimes I didn't have money to pay my bills, but thank you, Lord. Any grateful folks in the house that can say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't. I won't. I won't complain. I could, but I won't. I should, but I won't. I won't complain. I want to. Uh, I want to take. Well, you better leave me alone right at that keyboard now. But I mess around getting shouting here, right here. My, 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 my. I want you to uh, uh, turn your Bibles, if you don't mind, um, to a very familiar story. Uh, and now that I have about 15, 20 minutes today, I really want you to take out pen and paper because I always want you to write down some things that you can take home with you. One of my mentors always says that if the pews can't preach your message when you finish, he said you failed the test. He said your message should be portable, that you should be able to take what a preacher says and give it to somebody else. So I want you to take out pen and paper if you don't mind or on your phone. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, I don't know how y'all do it here. If you can stand for the reading of the word, Luke chapter 7. Beginning with verse 11, Luke chapter 7, beginning with verse 11. And for those of you who have smartphones, your phone is not smart if you don't have a Bible on it. <laughs> uh, Luke 7, I'm going to read from the New King James Version today. But I'm just going to read verse 12, I don't want to read the whole verse 11 through... Um, 15 I'm just gonna read verses 11 excuse me I'm read verse 12 and I'm gonna read verse 14 verse 12 says and when he came near the gate of the city it says behold a dead man was being carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow drop down to verse 14 it says then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried it stood still and he said young man I say to you arise verse 15 so he who was dead sat up and began to speak and presented him to his mother and I'm gonna stop right there I want you uh, to you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I want to uh, share today just from this thought it's not over nothing deep it's not over it's not over it's not over and if you don't mind encouraging someone who may be going through something say to them neighbor it's not over it's not over that's what I want to talk about today it's not over let me let me start right here my brothers and sisters and say to you in 2014 in Lexington Mississippi 2014 in Lexington Mississippi Coroner Dexter Howard received a phone call that Walter Williams had passed. Walter Williams' hospice nurse called the coroner, Dexter Howard, Lexington, Mississippi, and said to him that Mr. Walter Williams had passed. Coroner Dexter Howard, he goes over to the hospital where Walter Williams is, and when he gets there at about 9 p.m., they pronounced Mr. Walter Williams dead. So as Walter Williams is taking Mr. Williams, Dexter Howard, rather, the coroner, is taking Walter Williams' body back to the funeral home, they put him in the embalming room. He's rolled up, zipped up in a body bag, and all of a sudden, this is a true story, the bag started kicking. It's a true story. Don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. The body bag starts kicking. Feet kicking inside the body bag. 
and they were wondering what was going on. So they got a call, called into the family, says, hey, something strange is going on. Says your daddy is living. And the only thing that they could come up with was that his defibrillator that was in his heart jump-started and got him back to life. All right. All right. Don't take my word for it. Google it yourself. Imagine somebody pronouncing you dead. Get you to the funeral home only to discover that your defibrillator kicks in wow. and you start back living. Uh, come on, now, man. that may not mean much to y'all, but that may resonate with some of us in the building today. Oh, yeah. There were some people who counted you out who thought you were dead, yeah. right. but God said it's not over yet. I wish I had a few people that would wake up in here and say, listen, there are some people who thought you were going to die after that divorce, but God says it's not over yet. You uh, Y'all looking at me like I don't know what I'm saying, but you got to get to the point of realizing even when people count you out, God says, I'll count you back in. Can anybody get happy about the fact that there are some people that kick you to the curb? But God says, I'm going to raise you back up again because you were in some dead stuff and God got you out. Is there anybody beside me? You've been in some dead stuff and God raised you up out of that thing. He got you out just in time. Yeah. I wish y'all wake up and talk to me here today because it's very interesting because there are some people who literally have counted you out. Yeah. But thank God, God has the last word. Yeah. Yeah. Am I talking to anybody today? Oh, yeah. that, oh, yeah. that you know that God says, I got the last word concerning yeah. your life. And I looked at the text, Pastor Reed, and it's so interesting because I, when I looked at this story about Walter Williams, uh -huh. the story goes on to talk about how his family came back to the place where he was. Right. And I can imagine the looks on their faces that they pronounced my daddy dead mm. at 9 o'clock. And it goes on to say that Mr. Williams lived a little while after that. Okay. Now, I'm not, I wish I was talking about somewhere over in another country, but we're talking about in Lexington, Mississippi right. in 2014. All right. And that really helped me because it helped me to understand that even when people don't think you're going to get up from that dead situation, all right. God says, I'll, I'll get you up out of it. All right. All right. Can anybody get excited about that today that God says, listen, I'll get you up out of that situation. Yeah, I know mama and daddy may have given up on you, but the good news is God says, I got the last word. And in this text today, so interesting in this text, how you like to walk, and in this text today, so interesting because Jesus had just healed the centurion servant's son in this same chapter. Uh -huh. And when I looked at that, I said it's interesting because when you look at that, the Bible says in verse 11 that the next day Jesus enters into a city called Nain and he sees a mother who's leaving out of the city with her only son who had died. And the Bible says, if your Bible's open, she was a widow. Now it's one thing to bury a husband, but it's another thing to have to bury your son not long after that. And in that culture, you got to understand that the husband was the main breadwinner, if you will. And then if he died, the son had to take over. But now her only way of getting resources had died also. Uh -huh. Now, that may not mean much to y'all, but, but in that day, they would have to resort to begging or resort to depending on somebody else. And you know how it is when it comes to depending on somebody else. They're, they're, they're with you as long as you're up. But when you get down, they may not be there for you. I wish I had a witness in here today. Because everybody you count, you can't count on. Right, right. Am I talking to anybody today? Everybody you, you listen, because we all talk about how we got friends. Oh, yeah. But if you really want to know the barometer of your real friends, get in trouble. Right, right. Find yourself in need right. and you'll discover who your real friends are. I know I'm not the only one in this building today that can testify that there were some people that I thought were my friends until I was in a jam. And when I called them, they didn't even answer the phone. Am I the only one in here today that can testify that, yeah, I learned how to depend on God because you can't always depend on people. Right, 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 right. And I looked at that. I said, it's interesting because Jesus, uh, he comes to this woman's uh, uh, situation, if you will. Sees his mother leaving out of the city with her only son. And the Bible says, and she was a widow. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I want to just give you a couple, two or three things to take home with you. Because when I talk about it, it's not over. The relevant question is, how do I know 
that my situation is not over. I'm glad you asked. Point number one, write this. You can always depend on God's promptness, meaning him being there. You can always depend on God's promptness. Now, where is that? Look at it. Because if you look at verse 12, watch this. It says, and when he came near the gate of the city, behold, or look, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. The English Bible, the easy English Bible says, when he had almost reached the gate of the town, lots of people were coming out. They were carrying a dead man on a mat. They were going to bury him. Now, when I talk about you can depend on God's promptness, watch this. Jesus had just left Capernaum and walked 25 miles to this city called Nain. Now, watch this now, because this is the only time in Scripture that the city Nain is even mentioned. No other miracle happened in this city. But watch this, though. Jesus shows up at the right place at the right time. Y'all don't know when to get happy. I just said something. He shows up at the right place and at the right time because nowhere else in Scripture is this city even mentioned. Right, right, right. Come on now. Watch this now. <laughs> because you may not catch this because, but look at where he meets the mother. He meets her at the gate of the city. Notice now, he didn't meet this woman at her house where the boy died. But he met the woman at the gate of the city. Notice now, he didn't meet the mother at the burial site, at the grave site, but he met her at the gate of the city. You'll catch me in a minute. I'm going to say it again. He didn't meet the mama at the house where the boy died, and he didn't meet him at the graveyard where they were about to bury him. Y'all still didn't catch this. I'm going to give it to you again. He did, he, Jesus didn't meet the woman at her house where he died, and he didn't meet her at the graveyard where he was about to be buried. So since y'all looking at me like that, let me give it to you. Jesus met her in the middle of her mess. I wish y'all wake up and talk to me. Is there anybody beside me that knows that Jesus will meet you in the middle of your mess, in the middle of your hang up, in the middle of, y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm saying. He will meet you in the middle of your mess. And so look at when he meets her. Not only the where, but look at when. He meets her right when or right before, rather, he goes to bury her. Uh -huh. Oh, gosh. I wish y'all would catch up with me. He, he meets her at the time just before they're about to bury him. There's some people in the room that can identify with me on this. There are times when I can honestly say that thank God he met me at the right time because I was doing some stuff I had no business doing. Yeah, yeah. I know y'all got y'all spiritual halos on today, so y'all take those halos off for a minute because I know y'all want everybody to think you've always been in church, that you've always had it going on, but the devil is a lot. All of us in here got some stuff that we can say, God, thank you for meeting me in the middle of my mess. Is there anybody beside me that can thank God that he met you in the middle of your mess? So watch this now. So interesting. Uh, Jesus shows up in the middle of her mess. Right, right. She had already buried her husband, and now she's on her way to bury her son. Mm -hmm. Now that that that's interesting for me because Jesus knows how when he shows up to give you answers for your agony. Uh oh. Uh oh. When he shows up, he gives you blessings for your burdens. All right now. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? God, when God shows up, he always knows how to show out. I just gave y'all something good. Y'all yeah. ain't said nothing. When he shows up, he knows how to yeah. show out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes to the right place and shows up at the right time. Right, right. I mean, that was like a blessing for me. Right. And I said, number one, you can depend on Christ's promptness, uh -huh. meaning he knows when to show up. He knows where to show up. Secondly, you can depend on God's pity, <laughs> meaning compassion. It's right there in the text. I, I'm a topical, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, I'm literally, I'm one of those uh, expository preachers. I like to just take it right from the text. Right, yeah. So I talk about depending on Christ's pity. Watch this now. If you look at verse 13, it says, and a large crowd from the city was with her. And it says, he had compassion on her and said to her, do not weep. Uh, in other words, when Jesus saw her, he felt sorry for her. 
Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Oh yeah. Another translation says he had pity on her. Yeah. He says, "Don't cry." Right. Right. Now, can I be honest with you? I had a problem with that. Right. Because I'm saying, Jesus, how are you gonna tell this woman don't cry, and she's about to bury her son, and she's already buried her husband? Right. Right. Come on. You know how we do sometimes. We, yeah, don't you know, don't know what to say when people are going through. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, Jesus got a nerve to tell this woman don't cry. Yeah. And uh, I had a problem with that at first because I'm saying, Jesus, that's a harsh thing to tell a mother who's at the gate of the cemetery about to bury her only son. But uh, I had to look at that again because the Bible says he had compassion uh -huh. on her. And can I tell you why he had pity on her? Watch this now. Let's in the text. He had pity on her, one, because of the crowd she was hanging with. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to say right, it again. All right. He had pity on her because of the crowd she was hanging with. Uh -huh. Watch the text. The text says there are two crowds in the text. There's a crowd that's following the Lord, and there's a crowd that's following the lady. There's a crowd following death, and there's another crowd following life. Come on now. Come on, break it down. Break it down. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. So Jesus has pity on her because he sees the crowd she's hanging around. The crowd that was hanging around her was following death. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And it's so interesting. I said, man, God, why you, why you? I mean, I understand. I understand. Because there was one crowd, right, coming into the city. And there was another crowd going out of the city. And I looked at that and I said, man, it's interesting because there was one crowd coming from a celebration because Jesus had just healed the centurion's son. So they're coming from a celebration. Then there's another crowd. They're, 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 oh, man, listen, I looked at that and I said, man, they're, they're not only are they following a crowd with a celebration, but they're following the crowd to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, man, you know, one crowd full of joy, right. the other crowd full of sorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you that there are only two crowds in life? Mm. <laughs> Come on now. There's a crowd following life, and there's a crowd following death. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on with you, it. You'll catch it in a second, so watch this now. Come on with it. Um, come on so now. I'm asking a question, what crowd are you following? Yeah. Which crowd are you following? Because Jesus had, he had compassion on her because of the crowd she was with. But not only did Jesus have pity on her because of the crowd she was with, but secondly, because of the condition she was in. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. condition she was in let's look at her condition the bible says she was her son was the only son right and if you look throughout the scripture there are only two sons in the bible there's the only son of the mother and there's the only son of the father okay you <laughs> right uh, one was alive and destined to live are y'all listening to me yes sir so he not only had pity on her because of the crowd she was with, because of the condition she was in. He shows up and sees the only son that she was about to bury. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that and said, now, not only can I depend on Christ's promptness, secondly, not only can I depend on his pity, but thirdly, I can depend on his power. All right. Man, that's good news. Right. That's good news. I'm going to stay right there for a few minutes because I want you to really get this. You can depend on Christ's power. In the Gospels, it shows Jesus having power over death, power over disease, power over demons, and power over death. Disaster. Disaster. I'm going to say it again. Jesus has power over death, power over disease, Power over demons and power over death. Death, disease, disaster, demons. I don't care what situation you call out. Jesus got power over that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's Come good on. news right there. Oh, it is. It is. Come on. Whatever you're dealing with is going to fall into one of those four categories. And I'm saying that whatever it is, yeah. God has power over that. Man, that's good news right there. That says whatever I'm facing, God says I can handle that. 
Can anybody get excited by the fact that God says whatever you're dealing with, I can handle your situation. So watch this now. I talk about you can depend on God's power. Look at this now. The Bible says, verse 14 and 15, then he who came, then he came rather and touched the open coffin and those who carried it stood still. And he said to the young man, I say to you, arise. Verse 15 says, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak and presented him to his mother. Mm. Oh, gosh. Now. <laughs> now, you may not get excited about that because in that day, the Levitical law says, if anyone touched yeah. something dead, they were considered unclean themselves. Right. Right. But can I tell you, I get excited about the fact that Jesus knows how to touch some dead stuff in our lives. He, he's the only one that can touch some dead stuff in our lives and still be clean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I looked at that and said, God, I thank you for, for the mere fact that you can touch me in some places that other people can't. Right, right. Yes, sir. So look at that now. It says, uh, uh, you look at the power that Jesus has. Watch this now. When he touched the casket, the Bible says that the pallbearers who carried the casket stood still. And can I tell you something? I you like to tell a secret every time I preach. This is the secret for today. Don't tell about I told you this. Jesus, watch this now, has the power mm-hmm. not just for the living, right. but also for the dead. Uh-oh, look out. <laughs> okay, okay. Watch this now. When the Lord touches you, my man, watch this. This is what I like right here. I looked at the text. I'm going to read it one more time. It says, it says, so he who was dead sat up and began to speak and present him to his mother. Then it says, the who, then he who came, then he came and touched the open coffin and those who carried it stood still. Mm. Can I just say it another way? When the Lord touches you, the people who are trying to carry you to your grave have to stand still and be in awe. Mm. All right. All right. Ooh, boy, I'm about to get happy right there myself. Can, can I tell you, can I put it to you another way? There are some people who are, who are around you who are not there for you for your good, but they're trying to, trying to learn everything they can about you right. so they can take you to your grave. Right, right, right. right. Let, let, let me say it another way. Right. The same people who are carrying this man's grave, when Jesus touched it, they had to stand still. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, God has the power that when he touches your dead situation, the Bible says that the people who were right there with him, they were like in amazement. But can I, can I tell you why they were in amazement? Because they'd never seen anything that happened like this. And the Bible says he presented him to his mother and he began to speak. Mm. Come on, and I said, that's good news right there because yeah, they, 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 they thought he was dead. Right. But God says it's not over yet. Right. And that's good news right there because it says he sat up and began to speak. All right. Now let me go and close right here because the truth of the matter is that I don't know what he said when he got up. But one thing I can say he might have said is that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Is there anybody that knows that, that he might have came up with that kind of testimony? He says he who thought I was dead, he said I will get back up again. Can anybody thank God that it's not over until God says it's over? Has there anybody beside me you've ever been in a situation that you thought had you down? But when the Lord touched your situation, he got you back up again. And my brothers and my sisters, I feel like a Baptist preacher today. I want to tell you that God knows how to turn your situation around. I said God knows how to turn your situation around. Because some people thought you were dead. But at the same time, God says, let me just watch you and bring you back up again. Can anybody thank God that he'll get you back up again? I know I'm not the only one in the building that's been down before, but God got me back up again. And I want to tell you that it's not over until God says it's over. It's not over until the Lord says it's over. I wish I could get y'all to get happy about that. I said it's not over until God says it's over. Because God says, I've got the last word concerning your life. I've got the last word. And if I can get Lazarus up from the grave, I can get you up out of your dead situation. It's not over. It's not over. 
until God says it's over. Whatever you do, depend on God's promptness. Depend on God's pity. Because he knows what we're going through. And then you can depend on God's power. He has power over death, disease, disaster, and demons. As a matter of fact, in the Gospel of Mark, he deals with every last one of those. So that says to me that it doesn't matter what I'm going through. All I got to do is depend on his power. That says that whatever you're going through, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you because he's able. Anybody know God able today? I mean, don't fool me now. Anybody know God is able today? And he's able to do just what he said that he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise he's made to you. So don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. Those are the church open. If you don't mind standing. I'm going to turn it over to my music department. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill. Yes, it's not over until God says it's over. How about you? Is there someone in here today that's in a dead situation? Are you in a dead situation and you don't know where to turn and you're wondering, what am I gonna do? And we say to you that you heard from the pastor today that there is life in the middle of your dead situation. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Just asking him to come into your life. And there may be one. Are you in a situation that you need to come out of? There may be one who may not know this Jesus that we're talking about. And I invite you, if you want to get to know him, if you want to know who he is, if you want to know that power, that can raise one from the dead and bring them back to a spiritual life, a life of vitality, a life of work, a life where you thought it was all over. If you want to know that Jesus, I invite you to come and be a part of this family. And then there may be those that at one time was in church in a church family but you've kind of backed away for a little while you've backed away for a little while and but but you hear something tugging at you you hear something saying go back you hear you hear that that voice that that urging that's just urging you come to me and if you're there there is nothing that we have done in our lives that God will not forgive us for. He welcomes us with open arms. You remember the prodigal son? The prodigal son said, Daddy, give me all my stuff and let me go. And when he went out and he just acted crazy out there and just squandered everything that he had to the point that he was out there. Now, he was a Jew out there in a pig pen with the pigs and he said what am I doing my father has a place for me my father has riches my father has food my father has clothes let me go back to my father and just throw myself at his feet and say father I'm sorry and what did his father do when he saw him he ran to meet him with his arms wide open he said my son is home my daughter is home And I say to you, if that's you, if you want to come back home, we extend that invitation to you. Extend that invitation to you. Or you may just be passing through. 
you may have just relocated you may be looking for a church home and we say second baptist church is a family like no other this is one whether you're in santa Ana or whether you're here in lake forest this is one where god's power and his love is always at work we love you we love one another we support one another and we do what god has commanded of us and that is we're always trying to reach out always supporting always consoling always encouraging because that's what's required of us that's what is god's people we are required to do and if you're looking for a family that gives you support when you thought there was no support to be found I tell you it's right here it's right here and so I invite you to come and finally you may just need prayer if you just need prayer just slip your hand up if you just need prayer and we will have someone go and pray with you if you just need prayer We've got, we've got one that with a hand up in the back there that needs prayer. So I'm going to ask one of the deacons would go back and offer prayer with the brother there. Is there anybody else that needs prayer? Anybody else? We'll pray for you. Because we know that there's power in prayer. God answers prayer. Is there another? If not, you may be seated. We've done as the Lord has commanded. He's able. And I want to just say to Reverend Knighton, if you would please, we're getting ready to dismiss. I want to be sure that we stop by with Reverend Knighton there and we shake his hand on the way out and just let him know what a blessing he has been yes. to all of us today with such a powerful message just be mindful uh, remember the book bag challenge uh, sister Gail this is her baby every year but she's working for those kids for that book bag challenge and the supplies and we want to be sure that we are mindful of that do we have anything else did I miss anything oh the mail the mail court how could I forget the fellas? It's just this oh, is yeah. this is this is family over here. Let's give them a big round of uh, applause for the fellas coming down now. You you guys, we take these fellas for granted over here. But let me tell you something: we have a male chorus unlike any other anywhere. 